Right. Welcome to part two. In this part, we're going to use the unit circle, and we're going to talk about the relationship between that and trigonometry and see how the unit circle is actually just a shorthand way um, for us to be able to answer trigonometric questions. Okay, and so um, what does this have to do with trigonometry? Let's see what sine would look like on the unit circle. Okay, and so let's review from last time. Um, we'll start with the unit circle, and I'm going to use um, just this location right here at pi over 4. And so let's draw that in. Okay, we remember from the geometry days that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to try that. So sine of pi over 4 is the opposite side. Now, what would the opposite side here be? That's this, and that would be up and down, so that's a y value. So that would be y over 1, because the hypotenuse is 1. Okay, so that would just simplify down to y, actually. So sine of pi over 4 is just y. So now we ask, how would that have changed had I picked any other angle? Like, what if I would picked 7 pi over 4, or something like that? It actually doesn't change anything at all. It's still going to the opposite side on this triangle, no matter how you draw it, is always going to be the y value. So what that tells us is that sine of any angle, so I'm going to use theta to express that idea, sine of any angle is y. So we now can sort of substitute those for one another. What if I were going to do this same thing with cosine? And I'm going to start with theta this time. I'm not going to pick the angle. We're just going to call it theta. We would say, we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. What would we call the adjacent? It's left and right. Let's call that x. So the, that is adjacent over hypotenuse. And because it's a unit circle, that's 1. So dividing by 1 doesn't do a whole lot. Let's get rid of it. So that would just tell us that cosine theta is actually in reference to an x value. Okay, that's going to be a super nice shorthand for us. What about tangent? Tangent of theta would be the opposite side, which is y, over the adjacent side, which is x. So that's one way of thinking about it. It is y over x, and that's going to be valuable and valid. Although, we could also think about it this way. Noting that y is the same as sine, we could say that tangent theta is sine of theta divided by x, and we know that x is the same as cosine of theta, so we could express it as sine theta over cosine of theta. Okay, and so we now have these sort of basic relationships that will allow us to answer some questions. So y'all, if you're asked for cosine of an angle, you're being asked for the x value at that location on the unit circle. That's all it's saying. If, you ask for, if you're asked for sine of an angle, you're being asked for the y value at that location on the unit circle. So you can refer back to your unit circle that you have from part one to answer these types of questions. So let's look at some. All right. Now, the way you approach this type of question as of today or during this video will really depend on how comfortable you are with the unit circle. If those patterns made sense to you, you might attempt these without actually using your unit circle. You might try to do it sort of from memory or from um, using some sort of a schematic in your brain. So whatever's going to work for you, I want you to try that. And then I'm going to do an example of the first one. After the first example, you might want to pause and then try the second one on your own if the first one made sense. Okay, so here's what I do. I think, okay, 5 pi over 6, where is that on the circle? I know that pi is over here, and 5 over 6 is less than 1, so it's going to be a little bit less. So that means it's right in here, and I just kind of draw in that triangle. And from there, I'm able to answer some questions. Because when they ask for sine, we recognize that's the y value. I can see here the y value is the shorter of the two sides, so sine is 1 half. What about cosine? I can see that's the longer of the two sides, so that's negative root 3 over 2. And then when they ask me for tangent, I remember that's just sine over cosine. So that would be 1 half over negative root 3 over 2. I can flip and multiply those, and when I do, I get 1 over negative root 3, which needs to be rationalized by doing root 3 and root 3 on top and bottom. That's just multiplying by 1. And so what do I get when I do that? I get negative root 3 over 3. All right, so if that made sense, maybe pause the video and try the next one. What about pi over 2? Where is that on the, on the circle? That's right up here at the top. Okay, and so sine, well, we had to go up from the origin to get there, so sine is 1. We didn't go left and right, so cosine is 0. Tangent is sine over cosine. That's 1 over 0, which uh, doesn't exist. You can't divide by 0. Okay, so that's actually not defined. Totally fine. Now, the last one's a little different. Okay, this is negative 2 pi over 3. Notice the negative right there, okay? So we got to think about this one a little bit differently. So what I like to do when I get a negative is I like to think, okay, especially as a new learner, I think, do I know where the positive version of 2 pi over 3 is? 
Okay, I know that pi over 3 is right here because pi over 6 is right here, which means so we'd have pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, and that's the same as 2 pi over 3. So what does 2 pi over 3 mean? It means we started here and we went this direction counterclockwise. All the negative says is please do the same thing but in the opposite direction. So I'm going to go the same distance but in the opposite direction and here I am. Now guys I'm not worried about what the number of radians here is. Yeah it's true that it's 4 pi over 3 but that really doesn't matter right now because I have enough of an image here to be able to recognize hey sine is the longer side length on that and it's going down so that's negative root 3 over 2 and I can recognize hey cosine is the shorter side length and it's going to the left so that's negative 1 half which allows me to do my tangent ratio so that'd be negative root 3 over 2 the sine over the cosine and when I simplify that I just get root 3 Okay, so that, that's all that is. So don't be intimidated when you have a negative. You're just going the same distance in the opposite direction, the clockwise direction. Occasionally, we're going to be thrown something that tries to trip us up a little bit more than normal. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to do that. So if you're like me when I was learning this and you get a question like the first one, you probably have your unit circle in front of you and you're looking for the location where it says 10 pi over 3. And what you're going to find out pretty quickly is there is no location on your unit circle where it says 10 pi over 3. Let's see why not. Okay, let's put in those locations that are the ones that are over 3. So here's how it goes. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh my goodness. So guys, the issue is, this is more than one full revolution around the circle. So that's a visual way to deal with it. I also want to show you an algebraic way of dealing with it. Okay, another way of considering what this means is it's gone around the circle too many times. And so one thing we could do is we could back it up the equivalent of one full circle. So subtract one full revolution off of it to see what it says. So we want to do that with a common denominator. And we recognize that a full circle is 2 pi. So what we can do is subtract 6 pi over 3 off of this, because 6 over 3 is 2. So we're saying, whatever this location is, let's just back off one circle and see what happens. And then I get sine of 4 pi over 3. And that is this same location. We're asked for the sine value. Looks to me like this is probably a longer vertical, and my, my drawing's off. But if you take time and do a good drawing, you'll be able to see it. Okay, so that would be negative root 3 over 2. What about the next one? Two layers of difficulty on this one. We're both going backward and we're going more than one revolution. So let's think about that. If 2 pi is a single revolution, how many revolutions is 8 pi? It's probably 4. So this is telling us we're going backward on the circle through four full revolutions. So from here, 1, 2, 3... 4, which puts us right back where we started, and the x value there is 1. Remember, cosine's asking for an x value, so y, x, and tangent is y over x. Okay, now this last one might be a good one for you to try on your own. If you want to pause the video and try it, go for it. The thing that I notice on this one, one of the reasons it might be challenging is, yeah, it's too big, but also it's negative. So what I'll do on this one is I'm going to add a full revolution to it because it's too big and negative and I'm not a huge fan of that. So I'm going to add on with a common denominator a form of 2 pi. So 12 over 6 would be 2. So what do I get when I do that? I get tan of negative pi over 6 and that I can understand because I know that pi over 6 is this very first location, so that was pi over 6. Negative pi over 6 would just be the same thing in the opposite direction. Okay, the way I've drawn this, we're going to do our y value first. We can see the y value is the shorter one, so that's negative 1 half. And the x value is the longer one, it's going to the right, so it's positive. So root 3 over 2. Let's flip and multiply. And I get negative 1 over root 3 which algebraically we've already shown is the same as negative root 3 over 3. The last thing we need to talk about today is something called the reciprocal functions. Okay, These are different than the inverse trig functions. From the intro of the previous video, we saw that we had tan inverse that we typed in. When we're algebraically solving for an angle, so that's what inverse trigs or functions are for. They're for solving for an angle.
okay and that was the one where it would be like cosine inverse of three over five would give us theta or something like that okay so these are totally different than that these are the reciprocal functions remember a reciprocal is like a flipped fraction okay so what this is this is just saying that cosecant they, they define cosecant and i'll write it out we call that cosecant is the same thing as one over sine that's why it's called a reciprocal function it's the flip version of sine since sine is y that's one over y the next one's called secant Okay, secant is paired up with cosine, so it, since it's a reciprocal function, it's 1 over cosine, which is 1 over x. And the last one is cotangent. And we remember that tangent was y over x, or cosine over sine, so cotangent is just the flipped version of that. It's common to get confused between these. Um, one of the ways you can keep it straight is that in any pair of reciprocal functions, if you say the names of the functions out loud, you'll only be saying co one time. So I'm going to make a note of that. You'll be only be saying co one time. Here's what I mean by that. So I'm going to say these out loud. Listen carefully. Sine goes with cosecant. I only said co one time. Cosine goes with secant. So notice, I already said co and cosine. So a lot of people think, oh, cosine, cosecant. They sound the same. They don't go together though. Okay, so you can only say it one time. Secant, cosine, they go together. What about this one? Tangent, cotangent. All right, that's the intuitive one. Tangent and cotangent go together. And guys, I get that it sounds like secant and uh, secant and sine would go together. They don't though. You can only say co one time. Now I have no idea why that is. So if any of you can teach me, that'd be awesome. But I do know that's a, a simple little trick to keep you from getting confused on it. Okay, let's see how they're used. And then that's gonna be all for today. Okay, let's try questions like these. Okay, first of all, um, secant. The easiest way to approach these, I think, is to remember that secant is one over cosine. So, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over cosine of pi. And then I just have to remember, what is cosine of pi? Pi is over here. So I think cosine is the x value, which means that's negative 1. So that'd be 1 over negative 1, which would be negative 1. Okay. Cosecant. All right, remember, cosecant. We've already said co once. So cosecant must go with sine. So that would be 1 over sine of 3 pi over 4. Let's remember where 3 pi over 4 is on here. Okay, it's over here in the middle. And so the sine value at that point, it's positive because it's above the x-axis. So that would be one over root two over two. Let's flip and multiply. So I get two over root two. You can't have an irrational denominator. So let's do this little rationalizing trick. And I get two root two over two and the twos cancel. What about cotangent? cotangent would be the same as 1 over tangent, although I'm going to try something that I think is a little bit easier on this one. I actually prefer to think of cotangent as cosine over sine. That way I don't have a double stack of fraction. So cosine of 7 pi over 6, or negative, excuse me, negative 7 pi over 6, over sine of negative 7 pi over 6. And if I can identify that location and its coordinates, I'll be just fine. So 7 pi over 6, the way I think about that, 7 over 6 noting that that's pi and that's zero. Seven pi over six is a little bit more than that. So this is seven pi over six. So half a circle and a touch more, which means half a circle and a touch more in the opposite direction would be negative seven pi over six. Draw in my triangle. It's apparent to me that the y value is the shorter one and it's going up. So that would be one half for the y value. And then it looks like we're going left, so the x value is negative, and it looks like it's root 3 over 2. Simplify that out, and you get negative root 3. All right, y'all. Uh, that's it for part 2 of this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all next time.